Hi everyone, thanks for joining today. Um, my name is Jamie Irvin. I'm the Marketing Manager for Stonefly. And we'll be talking a little bit about different applications for iSCSI storage and how organizations are consolidating their infrastructure with iSCSI and using applications like server virtualization and blade servers and email archiving in order to make it simpler to manage their infrastructure and plan for disasters. So today's presentation should last approximately 45 minutes or so. And if you have any questions, please type them into the questions box over there in your management screen. Also, you can use the chat function as well if you have another question. I'll be looking at the questions, but not 100%. So feel free to enter them in, and we'll definitely have time at the end of the session to go through the questions. And I'll answer questions as we go along. All right, thanks for attending, and I'll get started. Um, today, we'll be doing a little bit about talking about how storage is typically deployed. We'll also talk about IP storage and storage area networks. We'll talk about the different applications for iSCSI. We will talk about how you should choose iSCSI solutions and go into the question and answer. We'll also do a really quick demo of Stonefly, uh, the Stonefly management interface as well. That way you can have a good feel for how our system works and also how other systems work and how you'd be able to use it in your environment. So here's kind of a pyramid on how organizations typically have storage. They tend to group their storage into different tiers of applications. You, of course, have your typical work group applications. You have your business critical applications as well as your mission critical applications. And for every organization, the applications that make up these three tiers might be a little bit different. Personally, I would move email up to the mission critical tier. I don't know about you, but if you've ever lost your email, it's a little bit annoying working through the rest of the day since we do so many communications through email exclusively. For other organizations, the most critical applications are things related to their financial systems or databases. If you're an online retailer, of course, your website is the most critical piece for you. So based on the different application tiers, you may use a different type of storage. Of course, there's DAS, aka direct attached storage. Um, you also have uh, your network attached storage and your story area networks. And of course, network attached storage is a file server, while storage area networks is a block storage on the network. So where, where we would like to see a lot of organizations go, and a lot of organizations are working through this, is using their SAN more effectively and using SAN to consolidate as much infrastructure as possible. Direct attached storage is typically a little bit annoying for management purposes. What you'll notice in this example is we have a couple of different application servers. Your application servers might be email application or email archiving, maybe virtual server, maybe a file server, or you might be doing something with a web server or some sort of content management server. As you can see, there's kind of a one-to-one -one ratio between the storage and the servers. So some servers, of course, are using up 90% of their storage. Other servers may be only using half, and still others are probably just using 10%. What ends up happening is you can never reallocate the storage from the server that's not using a lot to the server that's using a ton. So when it's time for you to grow your storage, you really have to trash your existing storage array and attach a new one. Although this is a really cheap and simple model, it starts getting pretty annoying once you get past around three servers or so. At that three server mark, suddenly you have three different arrays to manage and three different arrays to figure out the storage capacities for. As your storage as your network grows and the number of applications you have grows, you end up having a ton of hardware lying around everywhere that you're not really sure what's going on with. So it would be a lot simpler if you could just create one big storage pool for everything and share the storage pool with everybody. By having one big storage pool, it's a little simpler to manage. It's not as disruptive. In the event you need to scale your direct attached storage, you typically have to copy the old data over to the new array and then reset up the new array for that particular server. So that ends up taking a lot of time and really causing disruption to your applications and your clients. So another method is using network attached storage. Network attached storage is great. It's a file server. right? All of your clients will attach themselves exactly to the network. Your application servers are also on your local area network. And you create file shares and determine who has access to the individual file shares. This is good for heterogeneous environments since a lot of file servers support Windows file sharing and Linux file sharing and Mac file sharing. And unfortunately, applications don't tend to run well on the file server because the file server typically causes a backup. All requests need to go through your file server. So the amount of performance you get is limited to the amount of performance your file server can handle. You're also limited to what happens based on your local area network. If your local area network is busy dealing with email or dealing with IM from your, your colleagues, 
it ends up bogging things down. It will make your applications run slow as well as answer those requests for sharing files a little bit slower. It's also a little bit difficult to grow your network attached storage. Typically what happens is as soon as your first NAS runs out of space, you just purchase a new one. And you can keep adding new NAS, adding new file servers to your network, and your network grows, and suddenly you have a lot more traffic than you started with. Although you have a ton of storage capacity, it's pretty difficult to manage because there's not one UI, and you know, file serving is not a great for your databases or your mail servers. All right. So another option in terms of storage is dealing with the storage area network. And this is where you have one network that's dedicated to storage. All your storage is connected to the network, and all your servers that need storage are also connected to the special storage area network. That way, if you run out of space, you just add more storage to the network, similar to what you do with NAS. But the storage arrays tend to be scalable, and all of your management is tend to be managed at the switch level. Um, conventional story area networks are typically using fiber channel, and fiber channel is really great infrastructure. Unfortunately, it's dedicated infrastructure. It requires completely different switches. It requires using a dedicated fiber channel HBA. So every server that you add to your fiber channel SAN, it ends up costing about $1,000 per server based on the cost of ports in the switch as well as the fiber channel HBAs. This is a good model since you have one central storage pool on your network that you can carve out in the sort of chunks that you like, except for it's a little bit expensive, especially if you have lots and lots of servers. So what we recommend is going in another direction, using IP storage for your storage area network. And this, at this point, I'd like to do a quick little poll just to find out what type of storage you are using out there in the audience. So you'll see on your screen a poll. Please respond, and we'll give you a couple of minutes. 